Hi everybody, uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about using Twig's money flow to predict a drop or uh, something in the major change in the market. Um, so basically there's a couple things you can do. Um, the money flow is basically a measurement of both the price and the volume. Um, so when you're calculating this, you want to use uh, basically the um, flows in the market. So you, here you can see a general uptrend and then here you can see kind of a downtrend. Um, so as you can see in the actual price, uh, the actual price went did a major downtrend from here on um, and then it was below the money flow line here. So, um, But you can see even though that the uh, price was going up here, you can see that there was a rather big drop in the money flow um, between peak to peak here. Um, so that's a uh, inversion here so you can see that the basically the money flow is going out but the price is going up um, so it's important to recognize those um, and uh, you can basically start to predict when there's going to be a major uh, moment in the market so basically what I did here is you said basically I can see that the money flow is going out of the market here um, and roughly speaking the the price is going down until about this point. So at this point, you can see by this point, by this point in time, you're starting to see, hey, the money flow went way up. Um, we might even predict even a further money flow here. So it, indeed it had a higher money flow and then it went down from here to here. Um, so then that's hard to say, but still peak to peak, it went up. So you can still say that maybe there's a chance for a bigger uptrend here. So uh, you can ride this trend pretty good uh, here. Uh, and see that all the way up to the top, the peak there. Um, and then there's, from here to here, you can start to say, uh, as the as the money flow starts to go out of the market, you can start to predict and get ready for a major downtrend, potentially. Um, so that helps you see these in advance. Anyway, I hope this has helped you understand Twig's money flow a little bit. Um, it works a lot like a regular money flow index, uh, and you can run them side by side with each other if you'd like. Um, I can show you really quick what that looks like, regular money flow index. Uh, where is it? Sorry about this. Money flow index. So I'm going to run an eight period one, and we'll just run it side by side so you can see. So you can see, vaguely speaking, that um, it looks a little bit different, but uh, this is a 16 period, so that's part of the problem. So I'm going to run it an eight period. Uh, so you can still see some of the major flows here. It was actually a little bit easier to see uh, with the 16 period, um, but you can really see that there's an uptrend here. Um, and actually, uh, the downtrend is just slightly easier to see between peak to peak here than in this graph. Um, so the money flow here kind of uh, caps off at 100%, at which I don't really like, so that's why I don't really use money flow index, and I use the Twigs money flow instead. Um, but uh, you know, either one can be helpful. It's nice to see the little uh, regions uh, as well. Um, so you can zoom in and see certain areas. You can see that the money flow, both of them, money flow is going up here, money flow is going up on that one as well. So there's similar calculations uh, for either one. Uh, so actually, I think I'm going to change mine back to 16 periods. It's just a little bit too chaotic uh, in the moves here to see under eight periods. Um, so you can kind of see 16 to 16 um, and I can even change the color to make it look similarly um, a little bit darker maybe um, but anyway so you can basically see that the money flow is very similar uh, in most respects to uh, the twigs money flow and in fact this one here shows quite a bit higher um, than the twigs money flow um, which can be a warning sign uh, it is important to realize that this is quite a bit lower and this shows quite a bit lower as well but the twigs money flow does not um, cap off at the 100% range but it does have a pretty high uh, feature here you can go pretty high on these uh, so again to find a major drop in the market like we have here first we have to find a divergence um, so basically here the general trend is up uh, and yet the money flow is generally down. So that's considered a divergence. You can also use RSI for this and get a similar kind of concept. Um, but I like the money flow because it includes the volume as well. So the divergences are a little bit more certain uh, under a regular money flow chart like this one.
so for the rest of the graph, you can basically say from this point onward, even though it's not the peak, it gives you an idea that there is a general outflow of the market, even including this valley down here. Uh, so it does look like this is not a divergence from here to here, um, but you can basically see a downtrend. You can see some uptrends with uptrends um, and so on. So it basically follows it quite nicely um, after this drop. Uh, some of the other oscillators I use uh, in this kind of charting is including the MACD, uh, which is basically a price oscillator uh, with a moving average on top of it. Um, and I also use the Klinger volume oscillator and the stochastic momentum index and average true range. Um, so those were also very helpful in understanding what's going on with the chart. It does get a little busy sometimes, so I like to like eliminate some of these when I'm actually trying to do the trading sometimes. Um, but it is helpful. I can kind of zoom in on particular charts if I need um, and just see what it looks like in detail. So here you can see that it kind of has a convergence here on this point, And you can see right in here there's probably going to be a major change. And indeed there was on the volume and everything. Um, so... Anyway, but uh, primarily for a, if you're using something like um, uh, the Twigs Money Flow, um, it works just like a regular Money Flow. It has uh, certain higher points and lower points. It doesn't have the cutoffs like a regular Money Flow, which is great. Um, so you can kind of compare peaks and valleys a little bit better uh, between things. Another interesting Money Flow is called the Chankin Money Flow. Uh, but uh, in general, it works very similarly. Uh, the reason I liked it a little bit, the Twigs Money Flow, is because it keeps track of certain dips and valleys a little bit more detail uh, than uh, the Chinkin Money Flow. But this one actually is kind of nice. You can see the Chinkin shows this value a little bit lower, which is nice. Um, actually, significantly lower. Um, and it shows these about the same, and you can see different uh, differences between the two money flows. Um, so if you're really interested in details, you can run them side by side and kind of compare and say, hey, which do you like better? So in this particular instance, um, the money flow was quite high, um, and it actually shows the drop maybe slightly better, actually, in the Schenken money flow, um, which is kind of nice. So you can see it shows quite high, um, and then you can say, hey, well, maybe that's too high. Um, so it actually dropped right here pretty significantly. Um, so it's important to note uh, the difference there. So, uh, but there is an important point here. If you look at the Twigs money flow, the Twigs money flow peak to peak here shows a little bit better of a divergence. So you can see that this divergence, although this is going up, this is going down. This also shows the divergence, um, but it's kind of a debate um, which is maybe better to see. Like at this point, it's 0.27. And this is 0.36, and this is about 0.6, and up here, 0.5. Um, so it's a really is a debate. Um, they both show it pretty accurately in terms of the uh, divergence. But at this point, you can say this uptrend might have tricked you out and not uh, quite seen the divergence because this one would have been a higher level, whereas this one would have been a lower level. So you'd said, hey, aha, uh -huh, it's definitely going down lower. Why are my more of an opportunity to short this um, based on this but once you got to this tick once you got to this tick it would have said hey man this is really wise to short so on the chinkin money flow so it is a little bit of a debate uh, in terms of which you'd rather like to use another indicator you may consider using is the elder force index it doesn't work at all like the chinkin or the twigs money flow um, however it does do price and volume it's basically very simple it's just price times volume um, and you can see that that gives you the force because it's basically price times volume so you see in here you have quite a lot of force but you actually had more force back in here so this is a, just a difference between how these these money flows work. Um, it just means that there was a little bit uh, decrease in the volume, um, so to speak, uh, in the, in this area, and when it summed up uh, these calculations. So, uh, if you look at uh, if you look at the calculation, it's pretty easy for the uh, Chinkin money flow. It's just this calculation right here. If you wanted to use it, you can. Uh, use the calculation and then there's another calculation here um, very and you can see that they just multiply the, the volume times each of these so and again times the end day sum divided by end day sum of the volume so chinkin money flow uh, looks to be a little bit similar um, in terms of how it's calculated um, this uses the true range um, so you can a little bit different and how to how to calculate this 
Another way you might like to compare these various money flows is when you watch the charts, you can see which moves as the ticker moves, where is the very tip of the indicator moving and how fast does it move or does it respond in the way that you like it. Um, that's just a matter of preference uh, in terms of what you feel, uh, how the ticker moves. Another thing to be really careful about when using these money flow uh, indexes is when you check them, sometimes there's, uh, you know, basically the 930 open, uh, you know, it's a different time frame in terms of how the volume is. So uh, if you add a study on the volume, you can see here that the volume really picks up right in here, right? So the volume actually picked up here, but it really started to pick up basically at 930, which is 930 right there. So uh, how the oscillator responds uh, during different periods of volume, like you can see in your lower volume, it looks like the Chinkin uh, oscillator is doing a little bit better here in terms of, well, it just shows more, but you might like a finer tune where it doesn't show everything or maybe it doesn't um, respond to certain types of volume in ways that you don't like. So it's important to compare them. Like here you can see um, that the volume probably responded a little bit faster on the Chinkin money flow. Um, anyway, so it really depends uh, on what you want to do and really try to just maybe use both for a little while and then when you find one that you like better, use that one. Uh, so an easy quick way to do this is to compare peak to peak or valley to valley. It's not really the same calculation, um, but it can help you kind of understand what the extremes are in terms of these comparing. So it says 0.65 negative, and then this one says about 0.48. So basically you can see that the chicken probably uh, oscillates just a tiny bit more um, on these peak to peak and valley to valley. So the peak here is 0.58 and then this peak is about 0.63. So it's just a little bit of a debate. It looks like Chinkin might oscillate slightly more. Um, but again, uh, certain oscillations might actually lead you wrong. So you got to be careful um, about that and actually look at the actual changes. So, um, you know, for instance, here, this particular tick was a down tick and both of them checked out correctly. If you look at zoom in here, you can see there's a good down tick here, good size down tick. And then there's an uptick here, so it didn't quite work on this money flow, but there's also part of that, you can see it wicked up, so that may be part of the reason why um, the volume went down. So that because the volume went down, um, it was maybe considered a little bit of a negative trend, but this is negative trend, negative trend, negative trend, and then you can start to see some uptrends. And then actually here, it looks like between here to here, maybe this was a little bit higher. Um, for the Chenkin oscillator. So the Chenkin oscillator maybe got that a little bit better than the, or excuse me, the Twigs oscillator probably got it a little bit better. But, you know, it just depends on the tick and depends on different things. Um, and I would just, like here, it looks like this one got the negative a little bit better. Um, so uh, the Chenkin got this one better. So, um, but it really depends on the tick and it really depends on what you think and what I would do is really run the per tick estimate and then just to go through and do each estimate what you think is in terms of the money flow oscillators. So here's an example of where the chinking really doesn't work super great. Um, well it does show the positive uh, volume on this. It doesn't, it shows like way too much positive volume on this. So it's kind of a little bit of a debate. Um, you know, this one doesn't really show too much positive volume on it. So basically because the volume actually decreased down here between this and this tick and this tick, uh, it's a debate. So really how this is calculated, you know, it showed the actual volume was positive. Um, so there's uh, certain debates on how to calculate this. Uh, so for me personally, I'm going to switch it up and use the Chinkin oscillator. Uh, even though, uh, basically because I really like that it checks this positive volume here, uh, that particular one kind of bugged me a lot. Um, but uh, there's a lot of reasons to choose either one. I'm using the Twigs money flow and I've been using the regular money flow index. They've all really been helpful, um, but uh, just take a look at all of them and run them side by side and see which you like best.